friends, there we go. So if you are here with us live, uh, let us know where you're streaming in from. Uh, do you have a cup of choice this morning, Maria? What are you drinking? Coffee with milk. Coffee with milk. <laughs> <laughs> I have no sugar. Um, no sugar. Today I want to be, I will be happier than a bird with a French fry. This um, is for me. Oh, actually, see what I just talked about? I said, I've got all together. I got it all together. I just forgot where I put it. Didn't I just say it? you have to put it? You literally <laughs> just <laughs> said that <laughs> before we press Here's... go live. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's my oh, cup right. of choice. Coffee with milk in that cup. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay, so I think we are streaming. Let's mm -hmm. just make sure. Yep, there we are. And uh, so, and to be honest with you all, we kind of started to have a little conversation before we press live. And I was like, oh my God, let's talk about this um, in our call because I think uh, people will find it very valuable, um, especially the ladies of the house, because I know that there are 95% of us in this group are ladies. And fellas, you get to just join for the pleasure of the ride, I'll tell you. So uh, Lori is here this morning. She's got her black coffee. I love that I have attracted all these like black coffee drinkers. It's like when you do like your right fit profile, your right, your, your right fit client profile, I think I'm going to start including like black coffee drinkers, <laughs> yeah. like, black coffee drinkers unite. There's probably a Facebook group out there. That's just for black coffee drinkers. There we go. <laughs> I'm sure there is. So, um, so this morning I am here with uh, Maria De Silva, and she is uh, going to tell you all about her. And um, first, I'm going to let her tell you um, about herself, and then we're going to dive into the little bit of a conversation that we started to have uh, before I pressed go live here. So, and Maria, I was so excited that she was willing to come on because Maria, all of our other guests so far have been from the United States and Maria lives in Canada. So, uh, Maria, please introduce yourself and the name of your company and tell us, um, when did you launch your business? Cause this is going to be fun for everyone to hear. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. I'm Maria De Silva, founder of no Place Like Home Seniors Concierge. And I launched my business um, just middle to the end of December of 2020. December. So December. she's been in business. December. Yeah. So <laughs> less than two months. <laughs> and so I actually met you um, at Spark Live in the fall, right? Yes. And so you had not launched your business yet. No. No. And so was, share with everyone why you were waiting to launch. Because oh, the retrograde, <laughs> they said, you're not supposed to launch anything new or start anything new until I can't remember what retrograde it was. And it was December. It was like the middle of December ish. Mm -hmm. I can't remember exactly the date. And so I just waited. I patiently waited and then I launched it. So look. <laughs> Ta-da. <laughs> Right. So, um, <clears throat> hint, hint, that is why, uh, my events, uh, so my event in September, I wanted it to actually be in October and, um, I had to, but because Mercury was going retrograde, I made sure that the event was done like two days before Mercury went retrograde, <laughs> because if any of you, um, follow the stars in the universe, um, Mercury in retrograde is when you, um, don't necessarily, it's an opportunity for re it's redoing, revisiting, uh, reconnecting, reestablishing, re going back and figuring it back out again. Right. So it was really interesting. I had a conversation with one of my, uh, hundred K club members this week who I do one-on-one -on -one coaching with. And she was like, I thought I was over this. I was like, Oh honey, you're mercury in retrograde. You you're, you're being required to go back and relive through the shit, right? Because we're always learning and evolving. And it's not just about the business. It's about your own mindset and your own growth, right? So things that we have not, um, 
learned the lessons of or grown through, we will often come back during Mercury in retrograde. And quite frankly, it often feels like holy shit. And it's terrible. And you end up depressed and sad. And the whole world is going to collide because you're being forced <laughs> to look at things in your life, in your business, in your world that you've been wanting to change and you've maybe not been ready to change them. So, and it's not quite the right time where you start new things. You don't um, get involved in huge contracts in Mercury and retrograde. Um, my husband, when he got his new car, I think it's been, it'll be four years in April when the car came in. Um, there was like this two month delay with him getting his car. And uh, when it finally came in, it came in during Mercury. And I was like, Oh, no, 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 we are not signing for that. And we're not getting that until after Mercury goes direct. <laughs> he thought I was crazy. But he stuck with me because he loves me to pieces. And uh, yeah, so that's your that's your Mercury and retrograde story right now. Right. But how amazing that you were willing to uh, hold off. And because um, I think if I'm not mistaken, you were getting a lot of the behind the scenes things together, right? Yeah. Because you yes. had come to Spark Live at the end of September in the fall. You had not opened your business yet. You had not launched. And then from September through December, what were you doing in the background to get yourself ready? Um, a lot of it was more... Um... And thanks to you from Spark Life, <laughs> giving me the, the courage to say I can do this. Because I always knew I can do it, but something always held me back with the insecurities. I don't know where it came from because I was always very secure before. And I was so insecure. So I figured, let me just dive into learning and just learning more about the business and figuring out um, what everyone else is doing out there in the same industry. And just educating myself, honestly. Mm -hmm. And my husband kept saying, you know, why don't you, you don't need to have this and you don't need to you just go out there and work. I said, I can't. I said, I got to wait for the ritual. <laughs> <laughs> he's looking at me like, what? He's like, you won't understand. <laughs> he's so not like me, but he supports me. <laughs> That's, that is exactly how my husband is too. And it's so yeah. funny. <laughs> <laughs> so I just, I just, a lot of, um, just, giving myself the confidence so I can go out there and not look, feel that, uh, oh, what am I doing? And having the clients feel or people feel like, oh, she doesn't really know what she's doing. She's not confident in herself. So I had, I used that time to really build myself up, which Spark Live started the whole thing <laughs> of uh, all the training with you and and that have that has a really big reason why I feel so good and confident, and I was able to uh, launch it and say, "Hey, here I am. Well. <laughs> I'm here." <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm hearing a lot of background, so I'm gonna. I don't know if it's me or you're. Oh. I'm gonna just sit back just a little bit, so maybe it doesn't. It, there, there's something again we're in retrograde so a right. lot of technology yes. has yeah. issues in retrograde so um <clears throat> so let's talk about so first of all if any of you are watching are there any of you here watching with us um and i'd love to see it in the in the post below for us um have you ever because when you said that i was like oh my god she's me right because a lot of times we can see in other people how we feel and she was like I didn't understand why I wasn't so confident. She's like, cause I was always confident before, right? I was the same exact way, like working in nursing. I was very, very confident. I was very confident in my skill set. I was an amazing nurse. I was an amazing clinician. Um, doctors did not intimidate me. Surgeons did not intimidate me. Uh, quite frankly, bureaucracy did not intimidate me. I, I spoke my mind and, and I, I, like that I was so full of confidence and um, with my patients and I never second guessed myself really. Um, I, and I don't, and I don't know why I had so much, I'm still trying to figure this out why I had so much confidence then. And then I opened my business stores and I had zero confidence. And I would say all that. I'm like, I don't understand 
like I I'm not like this. Why am I like this? Why is it so scary? Why why do I feel terrified? Why am I so afraid of making a mistake? Why do I feel like I don't know anything? Why do I feel like I'm stupid for not understanding? Exactly. Right? It's crazy yeah. pants. Yeah. And I think it really is has something to do with the the security of being in a job versus not having the security of a job and really throwing. So you, in, in a job, you have confidence in the work that you do in your technician role, right? And we'll be talking about this um, later on today during the, the webinar that I'm doing at two o'clock today. And there's two different versions of you when you're building a business. There's the technician role and there is the CEO role. And the problem is as employees, we go to work and we, we like, we just do our technician role and we are confident a lot of times in what we do. So for example, I'm sure you're confident in what you do in the, the tasks that you do and the work that you do, but the lack of confidence is in the CEO role. It's the having the vision, knowing how to talk about it, going out and marketing, finding the clients. And it's that version of ourselves that we need to increase our confidence level. Would you say that that's how you feel? 100%. 100%. Yeah, absolutely. So I know the work, the work I I'm telling you, like I can do it with my eyes closed. I do a really good job. Once people hire me and they, and I do the work myself, they love it. They're telling their friends and they're giving me rave reviews. But I think where my confidence lacks is the CEO part, you know, okay, let's, I want to get this to the next level. And do I have what it takes to get it there? Yeah. Uh I think it's so fascinating that, um, because it's interesting. So I've had people who so I've had people come to me and they're like, Oh, do you, do you teach people how to be a concierge? Do you teach them how to do? And I'm like, I don't have to teach them how to do the work. Like, yes. Can I teach you some certain skill sets and some, some like refinement of some things? I'm like, absolutely. But most of the people that come to me, like, I don't have to teach them how to be, a concierge or be a caretaker or be a caregiver, right? They're just born with that. That's why they go out and start these businesses because it's like rumbling up inside, right? They already have the skill set. What they're lacking is the knowledge on how to make that profitable and find the confidence to go out and show up constantly to bring the work in. Because again, the difference between the technician and the CEO is when you were an employee, you just went to work and got to be the technician. You got to be the doer. You didn't have to worry about who was bringing the work to you. You just show up to your job. And then when you go out into business for yourself, a lot of people I think are expecting it to be easier and they're just going to roll out there and the work is going to just be there. And they're not forgetting that when they were an employee, the company that we worked for brought the clients to you and then you get to be the technician and the technician role is where we tend to get all of our joy from it's the interaction it's the right so tell everyone so where are you located um and then what is your niche because you have a very specific niche yes so i'm located in mississauga ontario so that's just 20 minutes outside of toronto So it is still a big city uh, for us. And my niche is senior citizens. So I help them stay home and comfortably as long as they can. Mm -hmm. And when it comes time that they need to go to a residence or a nursing home or wherever they choose, maybe it's too much for them, then I'm able to move them and figure all their stuff out, downsize them and and, uh, get their home ready for the market. So I do both, a little bit of both sides. Yeah. But I love how you have, um, you, you went into one specific niche, right? Yes. So we've been talking a lot this week also about people who don't pick the niche and then it actually delays your progress and it delays how fast you can grow. So, um, so before, before we talk money and where you are now, 
let's let's pick up the conversation that we were talking about about how old you are okay <laughs> i just i just turned 50 in october so that was very big for me <laughs> too. yes yeah that was a big milestone i'm grateful i'm here for it very grateful but it was just a little bit difficult it, made, it starts to make you think about a lot of things in life and you know you're only 50 and what were some of the things that were bubbling up for you turning 50? What now? <laughs> my kids are grown. My husband's on, you know, you're raising your kids, you're raising your husband, you know, because they need help. I helped him support his business and grow it to where it is today. He's very successful as well. And uh, I had, uh, you yeah, know, I was a big support for him. So my role was I just worked and raised the kids and, on the table, clean my house, you know, just a regular, and which I love. I just, <laughs> right, which is always fascinating. I just, that's how I, just, I was when I was leaving nursing. I was like, I just know how to be a nurse. I just know how to take care of my family. I just know how to cook and clean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right? As if those are not good skill sets to have. Right. I know, right? So, and now they're grown and my kids are grown. They, my, you know, husband's you know, he's supportive on whatever I want to do. And I just felt like, what now? What do I do now? I'm just going to sit here and do this for the rest of my life. It's not going to fulfill me. It's not going to, I won't be happy. I need to do this for myself. I need to accomplish something in my lifetime. That's for me. Yeah. That I can be proud of. So when I leave this earth, I can say, I did it all. I'm very happy. So I needed to be, I need to have a purpose also. Oh my God. I think I, I, if I start breaking out in tears, which are welling up right now, I, oh my God, I'm going to start crying. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I need to have a purpose or else I just, yeah. it just was a strong. So I just thought, no, I got to do something because this life goes by too fast. It's, I'm already 50 and half a century. That's crazy. And That's crazy. Yeah. And it's like, oh my, no, I got I to do something. I got to do something to fulfill me. And when I'm fulfilled and I'm happy, then the rest of the house is happy. Yeah. Happy, happy wife, happy life. Right. That's right. That's right. So, so that's a big reason that pushed me because I was outside of my comfort zone to do it alone. And I did it. And you just, did. You really, really did. So, yeah. <laughs> so like us having this conversation, um, that's why I said, we're, we're going to, we're going to have a little bit of a different conversation today. Like how many of you that are listening and watching, um, got to like around that midlife, or even if it wasn't midlife, like you got to a point where raising kids and you had a desire to do more than, right? Not And not that raising kids is not enough. It is 1 million percent enough for a lot of people. And by enough, I just mean that some people that is, that is literally what they want. They just want to raise their babies. They want to raise their kids. And then there is a set of women who they love their babies and they love their kids and they love their husbands and their households. And yet they still want something more. Right. And it's exactly how I felt with like, I had people, I was still working. I have never stopped working because I like you, like, like this need for per, like purpose. And sometimes, sometimes I feel like I'm doing it to myself. Right. Because I could have left my job a couple years, you know, before I did, I didn't have to start a business. I literally could have stayed home. And my husband was making enough money that if I decided to stay home and just, just be mom, uh, it would have been totally fine. And yet I knew that I, I personally would go crazy. Yeah, like exactly. I needed something that fulfilled me and nurtured me more, a, a step more than like the kids in the house and the husband and, and the cat and, you know, yeah. and family members. And I think there are so many of us that are drawn to find something meaningful. Like you said to, to like, I am so proud of myself that, and, and for many of you, like how proud are you of yourself that you took a concept an idea and turned it into reality so many people are so afraid to do that. So just the fact alone that you took a concept of something that you wanted to do and, and you like put it out there 
whether you put it out there this big or you've put it out there this big is irrelevant. Like the feeling that you get for, for just creation, because in reality, what you're doing is you're taking what you love and your personal self and you are creating and through our creation and our creativity is how the world evolves. Right. So, 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 so powerful. And we were also talking about how many women, um, honestly, and there, and we have some men, right? So I'm not like pushing the men out. There are men that are in this industry and there are women who are in their thirties in this industry and some that are, you know, in their late twenties in this industry. But I will say that I think the like 80% of people in caretaking and especially in concierge industry and organizing, they're, you know, in that 38 and up kind of 38 to 65 range because they have knowledge, they have skills, they have passion, they have compassion. And um, it's just fascinating um, how many women just want to be of service and help other people, right? Right. Yeah. And it fulfills us too. So it fulfills me as I'm helping them. So totally. Yeah. Totally. It's kind of like at Christmas time, like when you, when you receive a gift versus giving a gift, right? Like you give a gift and you watch somebody experience the receiving of it. Right. It fills you in almost fills you up more than you receiving. Exactly. And it's the same thing with the work that we get to do, um, with our clients. Right. So, so let's, now that we've had our, you know, f- um, cause I, we, we started this conversation because I'm going to be 48 in April and I am going to be honest, I have been struggling hard since about 46 and my oldest daughter is going to be 32 the end of this month. So for some of you who don't know my whole backstory, I was a teen mom. My first child I had at 15. Um, She, I I turned 16 when she was like six weeks old. So having, turning 48, closing towards 50 and turning around and having a daughter that's 32. Yeah, I am, my mind is blown. And I'm also like going through like this. Yeah, like what else, what else is there? Uh, you know, we talk about men having midlife crisis, women have the midlife crisis too. And it just, it just looks a little bit different from the outside. Men go buy fancy cars, women, we like find somebody to love on, right? We dive in to do more work. It's yeah. fascinating, right? Because we haven't worked enough, right? Exactly. I don't know. <laughs> I'd love to get to the bottom of that. But um, so yeah, so maybe you are feeling that way too. Um, I just like to say that I think it's part of our normal evolution of ourselves. And we still have, and at the same time, when you think back at how far and how much life you have actually lived in the past 50 years, it literally looks like four lifetimes, right? And so think of how much you can create in even the next 10, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years. It's, so that's also mind boggling too like how much you've already created and how much yet is to be created is um, amazing. So, um, so as I start to ask Maria some questions, if you have questions for her, start thinking of them now so that you can start um, popping them in below. Let's see. And Mark is here this morning too, black coffee drinker. See us black coffee drinkers. <laughs> go team, go team black coffee. Black right. coffee. <laughs> I, yeah, we're going to convert you to a black coffee drinker. So, so you launched your business in December. Yes. <clears throat> and as we talked before this, you were already on track to do six figures this year. Totally. <laughs> And she just launched in December. And so tell us what your trajectory has looked like since you launched your business two months ago. So um, I launched it, yeah, two, two months ago. And in the first, at, by the end of January, I had, I've already billed out close to $10,000. And I still have. Uh, now I've also gotten an opportunity that's another 
in the next uh, couple of months, this is not including current clients, um, for another approximately $10,000 job that I have in the yeah, next month. Uh, saying for February and then for March, right? Yes. And so <clears throat> the trajectory is already there. Yes. So, um, the bill pattern. Amazing. Happening. It's totally amazing. And what is amazing is um, you just rolled right into that. So right. help people, like tell people what, what, what's working for you? What is oh one gosh. like major thing that is <clears throat> working for you? It's the one thing that I, that is working that I picked up from your Spark Live and your courses that I'm in the 100K club is that networking and talking and just being, I just started to just go out there, even though I'm not, it's different now than it was before because of COVID, but mm -hmm. I just started to call up people that I know I had a big network of people from my past business. So just talking to them and not even trying to sell my services. It was just more of, Hey, how's it going? This is what I'm doing mm -hmm. now. <laughs> And it's just, yeah. And it's been just letting, I've just been letting the world know that, that this is what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And I can know, and, that, and then when I really started to do that, I was not expecting to be busy right away. I thought it was going to take a few months. I'm just going to let everyone know, do my thing. And then it just started to snowball from there. And, you know, as soon as I let people know, it was like, hey, I got this person. Hey, I got this person. And, uh, so I would just, that's how it all happened. I, I think it's just from letting people know what I'm doing. I know. And, 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 and as simple as, as that, simple sounds, that sounds, sorry, it's coming back again. I don't know what's going on. No. It's like, I think I'm hearing it coming through your laptop or something. Um, yeah, I don't know. Just going to roll with it. Um, so as simple as that sounds, like I'm just letting the world know. Right. But yet most people are terrified to let the world know. Right. We talked about this um, the other day when we had our three hour uh, referral marketing training. And we talked about, you know, fear, fear of being rejected, fear of being salesy. Um, I, I literally did a, a, a video yesterday for YouTube. Um, but all the fears that come up about, you know, talking about what it is that you're doing and it's just getting over that. And as you can hear, Maria also said, like, she wasn't doing it to sell her services either. Right. So when you are telling people, you, you don't have to go at it with this, like selling my stuff. Right. Like I swear to God, every day I see so many Facebook ads come through my way of men of, of like crushing stuff and dominating the world. And, you know, and I'm like, Oh God, it's so yucky. It's so yucky when you can do it in such a more natural way as literally just picking up the phone and calling, you know, a half a dozen people that you already know because they already know, like, and trust you. And you just kind of tell them, Oh, Hey, by the way, I kind of started this thing. I just wanted to tell you about it. What's going on with you? And it's just, exactly. it's, it, it can be that easy. <laughs> it really can be. Whereas before I wouldn't have done that. I would have just said, Oh, let me just mail out some flyers and let me advertise in the local paper or the local hospital boards that don't work. I don't know if it's worked for anybody else. The money wasted and sitting there waiting for the phone to ring. Yes. That was my thought process before so now it's like no I'm just gonna start to, and it's just I don't know it's so simple that it's like is that it's a coincidence <laughs> you know but it's not it's so it's simple as that just let people know just let people that. know the yeah. amount of people that have reached out to me even if they're not my ideal client but I was like, able to direct them to where they need to go mm -hmm. that means they're 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 listening they're hearing me right yeah. so yeah, exactly. And we talk about that a lot too. Um, and like when you receive referrals, sometimes, you know, first of all, you have to know who a right fit client is. And we're going to be diving into right fit client as one of our, our segments at Spark Live. And really, like, it's more than just like male, female, age, work, you know, there's so much more underneath that really helps you hone in. And when you know who your right fit clients are, 
you can easily know who a not right fit client is. And it doesn't mean that they're wrong and it doesn't mean that you are wrong. It just means that the partnership is not correct, right? right. And so um, being able to take that information and then tell the person who referred, you know, um, thank you so much, but, you know, it, it wasn't a right fit. And then they can learn who is a right fit for you, right? And it's literally about talking to humans and being confident enough to keep going out there and showing up, especially when it looks like it's not working, especially when it looks like it's not working. So um, let's see. Do, do, do. Let's refresh us here. You know, we always have this slow little refresh. <laughs> so going out, telling all the people, all so, the things, um, oh, there's my voice. Don't need to hear it back twice. Okay. Um, all right. So we have some questions here. All right. Uh, Christine has a question. She wants to know, do you have employees or do the services yourself? <laughs> Maria and I had a, a little one-to-one -one heart to heart uh, about a week ago, but I'm going to let her answer that question for you. Yeah. So I was doing, I was doing all the work myself and I just thought I was going to have a meltdown. So I had to call Kelly. I was like, what the hell do I do? Heck do I do? Sorry. And uh, it was, you have to hire an employee. I'm like, already, I just been in business for a month. I, like I'm already sort of, I was sort of telling myself, You've only been in business for a month, so why should you? Why should I be able to hire an employee? So, like I'm self -sab self sabotaging myself. Yeah, who am I to do that, right? Plus, when you're like, when I'm like, well, you need help, and whether it was, and we talked about, you know, you can get help in the business physically providing the services, and you also really needed help in a little bit of the back end of the business, and you were able to very quickly be like, okay, I can let go of these things over here, right? And um, when you see that in front of you, and you know that that's available to you, and you see that that's, that's what's, the, like, you're, this is your next evolution of yourself, and then you go, oh, but why, it, it doesn't make sense, I can't. What you're actually sending out to the universe is that you are not expecting to continue to replicate it. Exactly. So then your brain is telling you some crack shit that says, uh, that was a fluke. This won't happen again. So don't plan for it to happen again because, I mean, who are we to do that, right? I quickly snapped out of that. Yeah, so I'm now in the process of hiring two people to join me. And she's been in business for two months. Yeah. Um, let's see. We have some more questions here. Okay. So Christina said, for me, it was the selling of my services that I had no confidence in. I never had to sell in any other career. I had this feeling like I would come off as gross used car salesman. Yeah, yeah. totally. <laughs> Especially us ladies. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to put it out there because we, there, there's, Men and women are, we're just genetically hardwired differently. Men are very um, point, like they just say it. They're, they don't think, they don't have all this chatter back here. They might have, they have head chatter, but they don't have all of the, the secondary um, chatter that we have because men are hardwired for single focus because they were the killers, right? Like they went, they were the hunters, not the killers. Let me correct myself, but they were the hunters, right? And the women of the tribe, we stayed back while the men went out to hunt, right? So they had one job, hunt, right? So it's very easy. They're, that's why they're very direct, right? Whereas women, we have what is called diffuse awareness. So we are aware of all of the other things because we were the ones that had to keep the tribe alive while the men were out hunting. So we were the berry pickers and, you know, keeping the kids and making sure. So we were always observing all of the other information that was going around out there. So, you know, as salespeople, men are usually very direct And women, we take in all the 5,000 other quote unquote possibilities <laughs> that could happen. And it's just part of our hardwiring. So you're not wrong for that. You're not broken for that. It's just how you're hardwired. And at the same time, just 
understand like that makes you compassionate that you don't want to come off salesy. It doesn't make you wrong. Um, so let's see. So Christina, so we answered Christina's question. Valerie wants to know, what were you doing as a job or career before you started your business? So prior, just before um, this business launch, I was off for a year. It took me a year to get over the sale of my previous business, which was moving senior citizens from their homes into residences. So I downsized them and pack them, unpack them, um, that type of business. I had a, a business partner that, um, and then I had that for three and a half years. And prior to that, I was in corporate world for 23 years. And, um, and what did you do in the corporate world? I was a contract administrator for a computer company. And I, <laughs> so different. <laughs> The only reason why I like going to work is the people. <laughs> right. Which is so funny because that's usually why we start these kinds of businesses because we like the humans. We like yeah. people. I should have left years and years ago, but I couldn't bear with they were like family. I couldn't bear to leave. So it was like, oh. so when they got bought out and there was new people and then they changed the whole dynamic, that was my way of saying, you need to go. You need to go. This is not for you. I was miserable and you know. I'm just done. So I left. Best decision I ever made. Super Went into that. Scary. Yeah, very, very, very. <laughs> but I did that. It was like for 23 years, I was full time, but part time only three days since my first son, was, no, my second son was born to stay home more with the kids. So I only went three days a week, but I ended up doing five days of work in three days. In three days. Right? Yeah. That was like me. I would work three 12 hour shifts, which is you know, right. 36 yeah. hours a week. And so, I was always two hours over probably each of them. So. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> you. <laughs> so if anybody wants to know if we're actually live, yes, this is live TV. <laughs> um, okay. So let me pop back in here and see if we have any other questions for Maria. So <clears throat> So we have an event coming up. It is called Spark Live, and we would love to invite you to join us. This is where Maria got her confidence button. <laughs> you remember when I broke down and cried? If you go to the rewind and watch it back, I was like, Whoa. Well, you are the only one that cried. I know I, know. I cried too, even as yeah. a presenter. I definitely had some tearful moments too multiple people cried, yeah. uh, but they were good tears, right? They were, yeah, yeah, because... they were. I just felt so, um, cause I felt so alone prior to that. Mm -hmm. And I think it was just so overwhelming how I felt and how you just sort of, I don't even know how I even came across you to be honest with you. Cause I was, I think I was praying to God, the universe saying, please, you know, tell me where, I don't know where to start. I don't know how to do this. I, I give me the strength. I, and then all of a sudden, I don't know, think your advertisement keeps popping up. It's like, what the heck is this? Who is this, oh, woman? Who is this lady? <laughs> Why does she keep popping up in my feed? So, <laughs> so funny. And then it was over. So then I'm hooked. <laughs> now, yeah. And here you are, right? Business started, confidence back. Yeah. ready to take on the world ready. And before we, we went on live, what, w what was the thing that you claimed? You claimed it very strongly out loud that you told your husband. Oh, <laughs> oh, that I was going to be a millionaire and yes. there's going to be no, there, it, there, it's not an option. It's not an option. And it's not even about the money. Honest to God. No, it's not. The but. money is just a signal of the growth. Yes, exactly. And the impact. Yeah. I, I told my kids last night, I said, I'm going to be the queen bee of the senior world. <laughs> <laughs> that is so awesome. Yeah. yeah. So, That's so yeah, awesome. My face is going to be plastered on the side of the bus one of these days. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, I'm not kidding, actually. <laughs> That's so funny because when I, when I first started my business, my kids were always like, are we going to see your face on the inside of the grocery cart too? Yeah. And I was like, I don't think I'm going to do that. That's just for realtors. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's all you see. I was like, I don't think the people at the grocery store <laughs> are going to want to hire me from seeing my face inside the grocery cart. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
Okay. So uh, last, last call. Any other questions for Maria as we get ready to wrap up? Uh, definitely, we encourage you to come join us at Spark Live. You can join us. The tickets are only $97 while we're still in our early bird phase. Uh, I am pretty certain Kate probably dropped the link for all of you who are watching. Come join us. You will not regret it. And so um, why won't they regret it, Maria? And why are you coming? And you're coming back. So yes, Maria I is am. just there at the end of September and she's also yes. coming back. Uh, so why the hell would you to. even come back? Because it's just, it, it's going to give me more there. I can't even explain it. The feeling that you get when you're there. I was, I never thought I would feel that way with any type of event or I'm very, not, I'm not, I'm not hard to please, but it takes a lot for me to get that feeling of, oh my gosh, I love it. And this is what I need. And it feels like a family. It feels like my support. So my fear was doing everything alone mm -hmm. before. So this is where the point I wanted to get to and make it clear that once I was at Spark Live and I was part of that community, I felt the, I think that's probably why I got so emotional that I felt like I was not alone anymore. That no matter what, I come across, I knew I had a wall set up for me saying, I can come to you or anybody else and say, this is what I'm facing. What do I do? Mm -hmm. My biggest worry is who do I go to if I don't know what to do? And I think that prevented me a lot from launching my business earlier. And it just is the, the, the knowledge you learn, the things that you even think about. And it's, it's amazing. That's all I can say. I don't even know. I'll probably we finish this live session. It's like, I should have said this and this and this and this about it. <laughs> but people are just going to have to attend and see it for themselves. How's that? Yes. Perfect. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So yeah, because we, we want to bring you there because um, it is an opportunity to connect. You do not have to feel alone in this, whether you don't have your business started yet. Cause there were multiple people that came that had not like Maria had not yeah. even started their businesses yet. And it gave them the knowledge and the confidence. And you, you can stop seeking outside. You can stop doing all of the internet research that you spend hours and hours and hours a day. Doing can't even compare it. Can't even compare what you find out there to what you give bring to the table. And it's not just me. It's me. Like I'm, I'm bringing my 10 years of knowledge in. And I'm also bringing together some amazing other people and then you get to connect with them. Cause it's, it's not, you know, an event is not just me. It is a collection of people. I am leading it. Yes. And then you have all these other amazing people that you get to connect with individually as well during the event. And for those of you who are questioning about the event, so it is a live event, meaning it is happening live. It's not just, you know, a, a video recording of some kind. Uh, it is being held virtually because of COVID. We used to do our live events live in person. Uh, but at the same time, this gives us an opportunity to have a broader reach. Uh, you don't have to fly in anywhere. Um, you just put the time aside, schedule this as your CEO time so that you walk away fired up and ready to go. And, um, so, yeah, so I think that's it. Let me just make sure we have any more questions. Da, 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 da. All right, let's see. All right, we answered Christine's question. Uh, Lori has a question. She asks, uh, okay, that, thank you, Lori, for... <laughs> I was like, I'm a little confused by Lori's question. Now it makes sense. Um, do you have a specific type of referral partner or partners that your referrals are coming from? Um, not specific. It's coming from all over the place, just from people I've reached out to from the past and the present and my social circle. Our social circle is very big and they all come from different walks of life in the business world. So um, they're just sort of coming from different angles, honestly. I've just been reaching out to everybody and just making myself known on social media. And just so people, that's more for my brand so I can get my brand out there. Mm -hmm. But that's mm -hmm. also helped me with my um, people realizing what I do and have been reaching out to me through social media as well. Awesome. awesome. Yeah. All right. So, do, do, do. 
right, all right, all right. Okay, I think we got all of the questions. So um, any final parting words as we wrap up this session? And thank you all for um, tolerating our conversations about turning 50. Yeah. <laughs> And all the other things. Um, so uh, any parting words as we wrap up today? I just hope I see everyone at Spark Live. Honestly, I want everyone to feel what I felt and to have the success that I have received since then. Amen. So I think it. I think it's everyone deserves to be happy. And if there's a little bit of you afraid, just take that step and do it. And you'll see how beautiful things turn out. Honestly. Yeah. Yeah, I love, I love that. And I love that you just said everybody deserves it. Yeah. And it's true. Yeah. Like the dreams that you have, the desires you have, the goals that you have for your business, everyone, every one of you Absolutely. deserves it. Absolutely. Despite what this might be saying. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right, my friends, thank you so much for hanging out with Maria and I. Uh, we will be back again tomorrow with Stacy. And Stacy is going to be telling you about how she had a part time job while she started her business and then how she was able to, in just a few months, actually leave her part-time job because her business had grown so much in just a few months. All right, my friends, thank you so much for being with us. I truly hope that you are enjoying this inspiration series with us. I am even inspired by every one of our speakers so far this week, and I can't wait for one more tomorrow. And of course, looking forward to seeing you all at Spark Live. All right. Mwah.